All right, so let us look at this guy. Checkpoint 916. A half a kilogram wood block slides half a meter on a horizontal floor before colliding elastically with a wall and reversing its direction of travel. If the block has an initial speed of one meter per second and comes to rest exactly at its starting position, what is the magnitude of the frictional force between the block and the floor? So here's the block. Okay. There's the wall. So it goes, 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 boom. And then it goes back to where it was. Okay. And so it traveled half a meter between there and there. Its initial velocity was uh, one meter per second, and its inertia is half a kilogram. Okay, so what do we know here? Well, it it's starts off with a certain kinetic energy equal to half m v squared, and that is half times what's the mass? Point five times the velocity 1 squared which is 0.25 joules okay but the point is that let's look at it this way the the in terms of energy balance uh what let's look what are what is the the total energy balance well we know there's there will be a change in kinetic energy because it starts with a velocity and ends at zero, so there'll be a delta K. Will there be a change in potential? No. No change in, in source energy. But because there's friction, there'll definitely be a change in thermal energy. And because um, the block and the surface is our system, as it moves, um, the surface is included inside our system, so there's no work done. Uh, on the system so this is zero so we know that delta k is or rather let's do it this way delta e thermal is the negative of delta k okay and it is the negative minus 0.25 okay because our f our k final is zero so our delta k is zero minus 0.25, okay, I made a mistake. So delta K is minus 0.25. So this, sorry, my mistake, has to be minus, minus 0.25. So it is 0.25 joules. And of course, that makes sense because your thermal energy should generally always be positive. Okay? So now, we've got our thermal energy, delta thermal energy, but we're trying to find what is this friction force? What's that friction force there? And remember that our we saw that um, delta E thermal was also was equal to the friction of the surface on the block times delta x, okay, of the center of mass. So if we've got 0.25 here, that's your delta thermal, and we've got F. Uh, surface on block friction force and we know what our delta x is it's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 so it is 1.0 meters okay remember this is the point is that you have to even though the delta the total delta this is please don't get confused here this is actually it should be d path okay it should be the entire path traveled you should add up the, the the segments, okay? So it's going to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. That's why um, that's why it's different to a spring force or gravitational force. If you're considering a spring or gravity, then we only consider the final and initial positions. But if you're considering anything to do with uh, friction, you have to consider the entire path, entire path, okay? So now your so now your your friction force FSB is 0.25 divided by one, so it's 0.25 newton. Okay. 
Let me just uh, make sure. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, guys. So the important thing here is check out your, your energy equation. Solve for it. And know that your delta E thermal is your friction force times the entire path. The entire path. Um, yeah, that's it. Cheers.